Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and it is Friday, March 25th, and we are back for another live stream. <laughs> Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Islands in the stream, that is what we are. A little Dolly Parton for you. <laughs> Dolly Parton and uh, Kenny Rogers. Kenny Rogers? Yeah, I've got coffee with... Uh, Skins in it or bug wings or something in there. Mm. Oh, sounds, uh, sounds tasty. Extra so, protein. Yes. Protein. Hey, I've had, I've eaten worse. But um, um, we're going to have a good time today. Uh, we got a bunch of stuff to talk about. And um, well, first thing, I wanna, I'm, I'm getting all excited. Um, I've been working the last couple of weeks. Um, and you guys have been probably seeing if you've been following me on, on uh, social media. Um, and we're almost done. I think I've got one or two more videos done for my upcoming dynamic lighting and the figure course. Um, let me show you a couple of things that we've been doing. One thing I did, I've never drawn superheroes before. And I know Dustin and uh, Nick have never seen me draw a superhero. superhero. Look, I drew Spider-Man last night. I had fun drawing Spider-Man. But this is part of what we're doing. I'm talking about dynamic posing, which obviously you're going to get with superheroes. And then lighting and all kinds of stuff. But I'm doing, I'm treating it with the figure. Here's one I just finished where we were talking about um, uh, playing compliments. This one was strictly uh, talking about uh, orange and blue, but you can do violet and yellow and red and green and just see what you get. I, you know, the whole what I really want people to come out of this course with is a is a desire to experiment and push and try things they've never done before. Uh, we're going to be talking about getting into dramatic poses, dramatic lighting. Uh, diffused blown out lighting like we have here um, darker skin tones you know african-american skin tones uh, that I did I've done a couple there and that's to me that some of the most beautiful figurative paintings I've ever seen have been done with uh, dark skin models and I really love uh, one of the great things about darker skin is that it reflects the coolness of the sky. So not only do you get warms uh, in, in, in your light areas, but you also get reflected cools and you just get this whole variety of color and temperature. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, so we've just been having a lot of fun going through all these different, I've got lecture after lecture after lecture. It's gonna be a really full one. And uh, I think it's gonna go really well. Uh, if you haven't gotten my uh, anatomy course, I think it's going to make a good bundle because um, this, I don't really focus on anatomy. I'm, I'm not teaching anatomy. I'm really teaching about how to pose and how to light and that sort of thing. So I'm we, really excited about it and I'm, we're hoping to have it out in the next Which week. on that point, I was thinking this morning, it also might make a really nice compliment with your, your lighting course. Yes, well. exactly. So maybe the three of them would go really well together. Yep. So a nice three-way bundle. But, um, and it's really diverse. I mean, everything from... You know, female nudes floating in the water to Spider-Man flying through the air. So whatever you get. And the whole idea is basically how to capture light on the form, right? It's all about capturing light on the form, thinking about form. I'm trying to get you to stop thinking, if you don't already, um, in flat terms and think 3D. How does that light wrap around the form? How does light affect, how is light affected when it hits the form and specifically, obviously, the human form? How does light work with, with the skin and different tones of skin, whether it's dark skin, light skin, mid-color skin? You know, there's a lot of different variables to play with, and you can spend a lifetime doing this kind of stuff. And uh, I, I just have a, a ball doing it. Yeah, getting a skin tone in paint is really it's difficult. hard. I always struggled with it. I mean, you know, when you're a kid, you grab the peach crayon or the brown crayon or yeah. whatever, you know, and you just go in. But when you get into really studying skin it's yeah. weirdly translucent and reflective and there's all kinds of temperature changes Tem exactly you know? here's one that i did with this floating character guy coming up and this one i really focused on how your shadow areas can change temperature um going from very cool dark down in the lower part up to in the thinner shadow areas you know getting a lot of light reflected in and translucent light going through the skin and, and that sort of thing so there's there's a lot to be played with there um but even bigger news so that's oh, like, so that's going to be available hopefully in the next week because we've been getting a lot of questions about that um the bigger news is 
I want to back up a little bit. And I talked about this a little bit in the video that we put out. But, you know, eight years ago, nine years ago when he started, 80 years ago when we became the business model that we are now, um, I had just lost my job with Digital Domain. Before that, I'd, I'd left Disney. Um, both those times when I left, it was the result of executive decisions and that sort of thing. The second one with Digital Domain, it was, you know, the studio went bankrupt. And I really decided I wanted to go into a business where I made my own choices. I was the driver of whatever was going to happen. And so that was the first thing that I thought about. But then I started looking around at the world of art education, the world of art. And I was really annoyed, first of all, just very annoyed with the direction that tuitions were going in. This is tuitions with private schools across the board. But obviously for me, because I'm an artist, specifically art schools. And um, it just blew my mind the amount of uh, inflation, the, how much it skyrocketed to go to, to go to art school. When I went to art school in 1986, which was, uh, what, 35, 35 years ago, 36 years ago? Um, 30, how, how long ago is that? 1986. Anyway, um, when I went to art school, Ringling College was $8,000 a year or a semester. I can't remember. I think it's, uh, it's around 50 something now. It's, 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 and that's not just Ringling. It's art schools across the country. And so when I, when I started thinking about this, it really bothered me because we're getting into a realm now, even the 8,000 when I went to school, I couldn't have done it without help from scholarships, from friends giving me money. I didn't, I, I was poor and I, 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 I had a hard time. Um, I can't imagine going to school now with the way tuitions are now. So I'm making this really long-winded. I, I got to tighten this up, but it, it, I'm really passionate about it. I wanted to come up with a business where we could get quality art education to people that couldn't afford college. Because like I said, tuitions have gotten to the point now where there's so many students out there around the world that cannot go to school because of the cost prohibitiveness of it. They just can't get the education. And that to me is a crime. We don't know how many... Picassos, how many Michelangelos, who's out there that'll never get the training because they didn't have the money? And so I um I got together with Nick and we we you know our 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 uh mission statement is making art education affordable for for everybody around the world. And um and so that's my long-winded uh explanation for why we started this business. Um and yes, I would need to make a living at it and all that, but I really wanted to do something good for the for the art education world. And so now, um, and we've done that over the last eight years. We've really built the business, and we're we're trying to build it more academically as well as we move forward. Um, I want this to be a place where you can go and not go bankrupt in student loan debt, like where you can get your your education if you want to do it and uh, and pay literally a fraction of a percent of what you would pay for college, and um, uh, and we've done that over the years, and we're going to continue to keep building. And one of the things we've decided to do now, you know, we've got our, our membership plan that you can sign up for, um, which is uh, whatever it is a year. I can't remember what it is now. Uh, uh, do you know what it is right now? Uh, right now, it's actually on sale for it's $175 a year. Yeah, 175 bucks a year for everything we have on the site. But even that can be cost prohibitive, you know, for one shot up front. And so one of the things that Nick and I came up with um, or Nick came up with is this idea of breaking it down and doing a twenty dollar a month. Is it even that? Uh, right now, it's actually on sale for fourteen ninety nine a month. So it's even less. So for fourteen ninety nine a month, you can stream everything on the site, and that's what I spent the last twenty minutes talking about to get to. We're now for a limited time. Um, you can go to our site, sign up, and have a seven day free trial to test out um, if you like it or not. You can stream for seven days for absolutely free as much as you want and check it out. And if you like it, stay with us because uh, we're betting that you will. I think our content is so good. We've got, uh, I pride myself in trying to get some of the best people in the industry. Um, and, and I try to give you as much content as I can give you that I've gathered in my feeble little brain for the last 40 years. And, um, and and get it out there to you so you can learn from it. That's something I didn't have when I went to college. 
And, um, and so I wanted, you know, young art students, young people coming into the industry now to have something we didn't have. And that's a head start to, to learn off of, you know, what took me 40 years to learn. I'm hoping I can, you know, impart in you guys, you know, now. And, and so go the, ahead. The other cool thing about it is like, well, to your point, the reason we're doing the free trial is, you know, depending on where you're at in the world, even committing to fourteen ninety nine a month could be cost prohibitive for some people. And we, and we totally get that. So we figure, hey, give it a whirl. Check it out. Check out our storyboarding classes. Check out our drawing classes for kids, whatever you want to do. And like Aaron said, we're betting that you will like it and want to stick around. And the cool part is, though, you can start and stop at any time. So, you know, if you, exactly. if you want to stay on for a month and leave great if you want to stay on for six months and then you got to drop out totally fine not drop out it's not a college tuition, but, <laughs> stop you know you just want to leave you come to back stop. yeah you know um you know it's up to you whatever you want to do we want to make it as accessible as we possibly can so. We're, we live in some crazy times right now but we also live in some amazing times and uh and i prefer to try to find the beauty in the world and look at all the positive and, and try to turn away from all the craziness that we're seeing and this ability to share information is so incredible good information obviously there's a lot of bad information being shared but we have this ability to teach to learn all online and you know the old way of thinking um is old and we're we are in an age where we can um turn our computer turn on our computer look into our phone and we've got a world of learning at our fingertips if we just approach it the right way and that's what we want to do for you guys is we want to give you that you know if you want to be an artist if you want to be a fine artist if you want to be a professional um you know in the industry uh, whatever it is that you want to do i want to give you the opportunity to come to us and learn something so that's what we're doing with this go over to creatureartteacher.com and check out the streaming option try it out for free for seven days and see if you like it if you like it stay with us if you don't come back around another time um, it's totally up to you. And that's, I'm really, really excited that Nick has been able to pull this together over the last several weeks. Yeah. Well, you know, let's, I, I think let's draw, let's go ahead and get started. Give people a taste of what they're going to get into. So in a couple of weeks, um, we are going to, um, uh, be doing a live event online where I'm going to be doing some animation, uh, a dialogue piece. And I'm going to animate all day long. And, uh, the character is Muskrat Jim. Muskrat Jim. There he is. Muskrat Jim. And um, I'm not sure if I'm going to have Milo in there or not. Here's Milo. Milo's his bear. Right there. But I thought it might be kind of fun to sit down. For those of you that might be joining us, um, these are some of the model sheets that I made for my character design course. Which is included ago. in both memberships. By the yeah, way. it is included in both memberships. So if you want to stream it, you can you can go over and stream the character design course ahead of time. Um, and you can do that for free. Um, but I'm going to be using this guy to, to do some animation and teach you guys animation uh, on April 9th. So that's another thing. If you're interested in joining us on April 9th, go on over to creatureartteacher.com slash live. And you can get all the information there. But what I'm going to do today is just sit down and draw him different expressions. Because I, to be honest with you, I have not drawn this character at all since I drew him for this course. So I've had to relearn him all over again. And so I thought maybe you guys could sit here and watch me struggle and draw with me if uh, if you're going to join us on the course. And, uh, and there you go. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to talk about his structure. His structure. How to draw them, how to get expression, all of that. Oh, one other thing I want to mention and while you're drawing is um, our puzzles that have, uh, they started oh. shipping. So the first batch of puzzles are out. We've still got a few left. If you go to creatureartteacher.com slash puzzle, our first ever uh, limited edition puzzle of uh, Aaron's uh, Best Buds image, Best uh, which buds. is super cute, 345 piece puzzle. Uh, right now, it's USA only, uh, just because we're working out all the shipping logistics with our good friend up in Vermont, Kent at Vermont Puzzle, who's handling all the shipping. So we wanted to do this as sort of a test run. Uh, but it's going great. And uh, if you're interested, snap one up. It's great. It's great. It's great. So is Zoungie out there? Do we know if Zoungie's out there? 
yes, he's here. Hey, Zoungi, I, I woke up in a panic this morning because it's Friday, and I know you're doing your drawing class on Thursday. I thought I was supposed to be there last night, and I was getting ready to apologize to you uh, <laughs> for forgetting you last night. And then I realized it's not, it wasn't last night, it's April 7th. So <laughs> I'll see you on April 7th, Zoungi. <laughs> I've been so neck deep in this course trying to get it done. Uh, Dustin and I have a strict uh, schedule of trying to get two two videos done a day, at least taped. So I have to do two paintings at least a day um, or more. And that requires many hours of, of work. <laughs> we were talking about this. Um, you and I were talking about this off camera. But what during a, a studio production, what, what was your typical goal? number of paintings you would want to get done you know when um yeah when i when i was doing development work i'd have moments uh we would illustrate we would spend time writing we would just sit in the story room and write and write and write and then we'd break up and the uh, uh, like the writer would go and actually write what we discussed when i say we write and write and write we're actually we're pinning up ideas and stuff on on the storyboards and then the writer would go away and he would write pages or she would write pages and then i would go away and take moments key story moments from those ideas and I would go and illustrate them. And so I would try to get five to 10 um, uh, done a week. So one to two, preferably two to two a day, but I would never get 10 done. I would never get 10. It was always the goal to get 10, but by and large, you know, there would always be one that I would get into and it would take me a full day or a day and a half to get done. But, uh, but you know, between five and 10 would be a good week. And then ultimately the goal would be to get, this is before we would go to script, I would get the uh, the entire movie um, illustrated with key moments uh, uh, illustrated, and we'd have all of our bullet points uh, written up there, and then I could go through over a series of about six storyboards, and um, I could pitch the entire movie. We would always have it pitchable um, for executives or whoever... You know, like when Phil Collins came onto the movie to start writing, I, you know, I had all that done for Brother Bear so I could take him through the movie and get him familiar with it. So it serves its, uh, you know, a lot of great purposes. So, um, Muskrat Jim. Muskrat Jim starts as a circle. That I do remember. And he's got this... We are getting some nice comments from uh, people about the courses and the membership. We've got uh, Julia says, it's my second year that I've enrolled as an annual premium member, and it's definitely worth it. I've learned so much. I'm grateful I can receive the art education that I didn't get a chance before. Thanks, Aaron. Oh, you're welcome. And Thank then, you. That makes me feel good. Over on Twitch, someone says, uh, let's see, Creature Art Teacher has certainly taught me more than I ever learned at college, so I honestly can't thank you all enough. Oh, thank We're you. We're getting lots of comments like that, so... So starts as a ball. He starts as a ball like this, and I draw this beard as about it's about twice the size of the ball in, in volume. Okay, off of that, his eye line is about halfway down the ball, and off of that eye line comes his nose. The nose is shaped with a you know, it's got a peak on the top. It's a long triangle, like so. And you got the nostrils built right in. Okay. The eyes are going to be very expressive. And they sit right at the bridge of the nose. Right now I'm drawing a very um, broad line right Coming off of that nose, we're going to have the mustache. 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 Mustache Sally. What? Sally has a mustache? <laughs> no, you better slow that mustache down. So, so off of that, the mustache, basically, if we look at it from the front, Shaped like this. It's shaped like this. Shaped from the front. When it breaks up down here. Oh, there's a little mouth right here. 
There's the beard. Okay. <clears throat> beard comes in here. Cheeks come off the. Now, this is all like a pelt hat he's got. That could be generally any shape. I like to make it a little bigger in the front. Don't make it symmetrical. That's the only thing. That's a kiss of death. Twitch question. Sure. Hey, Aaron. I'm a 2D, hey, how's it going? I'm a 2D animator, and I was given my first horse run cycle scene this week. Would you consider that the ultimate animator test? <laughs> I don't know about the ultimate, but it's a good one. It's a tough one. I mean, what's the joke about yeah, I mean, Andrew and a horse going backwards up yeah, a spiral staircase? Yeah, anim yeah, animate a horse walking backwards down the spiral staircase. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then off of the hat are all these little tails from other little animals that he's trapped. Okay, so if I knock this back, it should, you know, it, it should be simple. Okay, and I'm just going to start with his head. That's why we're, we're starting with this. So there's a lot of fur coming off of here. Off of his hat. Okay. Uh, any plans to do some new charcoal drawings soon? Uh, there aren't any plans anytime soon, to be honest with you. Um, but we could be fun to do one on a stream again. We haven't done a charcoal in a while. Yeah, we haven't. So when you get in tight, I want there to be like a little wrinkle between his brow and his nose. That's the most dramatic facial feature. The eyes. The eyes. The eyes tell it all, baby. So here, and I want little bags under his eyes. Now, when you draw the other eye, you want to be sure to get that eye set inside the skull. Now, what, one of the things I've done here, ooh, whoa. Eraser's too big. It's a too big. Is I made the eyes too far apart. I want the eyes. The eyes should be about, oh, about two-thirds of an eye width apart. Two-thirds of a washing machine. <laughs> they just read a little better. They play a little more cartoony that way. And then off of here... You can have his eyebrows. Uh, is there any advice you'd give uh, on texturing characters in Photoshop or Procreate? Well, it depends on what you want to do. When I do my texturing, um, if I want it to be photo real, uh, like if I'm doing it for a CG film, I do a lot of photo bashing. But I try to get that photo bashing to blend, obviously, as much as I can with the feel of the rest of the piece. All right, so here, um, there's a the mustache coming down. This is after we've laid that in. I'm just going to give him a, you know, just a straight expression right now. So we're not going to really see any mouth. And then off of the, that the cheek, or off, off of the mustache, comes the beard which goes right up into the sideburns so really just we're framing we're framing the eyes and the face into this shape this smooth rounded shape right there here's a twitch comment in high school my quote art teacher said to me to sell my art supplies and never draw again because i wasn't skilled enough wow <laughs> i've been subscribed to your website for two years and i've learned so much more than i ever did in school i'm really thankful for everything you do and the subscription is definitely worth the price thank you yeah that's a horrible teacher by the way yeah rude that's much? a horrible human being yeah so uh, i'm glad you stuck with it 
Now, I had a teacher, my English teacher, who I can't fault him for this because I, I was pretty rebellious. And uh, I was in AP English. For what reason, I have no idea. But I, I pretty much slept through it and was failing it. And um, I was just having a hard time with everything at, at, at the time. And, um, and it came, at one point, he pulled me aside. And he goes, look, I know you want to be an artist. You think you're going to be an artist. But the odds are you're not going to be an artist. So pull it together and, you know, start paying attention to my class. <clears throat> and I, I didn't. I ended up going to summer school. And I never was in his class again. And I became an artist. Hey, look at that. But I should have listened. So there we go. So there's... Which comment? Uh, he kind of looks like a trapper. That's what, exactly what he is. Is he a trapper or a gold miner? I always saw him as a gold miner. But I no, he, to me, uh, he's a mountain man. He's a uh, well, fur gold trapper, miner. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's a fur trapper. He comes out of the woods a couple times a year to to sell his, his pelts. Sorry to ask this question, but are you an animator or an illustrator yes <laughs> i am both i actually went to college to be an illustrator and ended up getting a job as an animator so i spent 21 years at disney animating and directing but during that time i was also a painter and illustrator and 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 uh you know i've done a lot of a lot of both that was one of the great, great opportunities. One of the lucky things for me in my career is that I've, you know, been able to, um, my education was not just animation. As a matter of fact, I didn't get any animation education until after my schooling. My, my, all of my education was in illustration, um, uh, drawing, painting, all of that. And then I learned uh, animation at Disney. How would you keep uh, characters more proportional in animation or in uh, turnarounds? This is what I'm trying to show you now. This is what we do. And uh, by keeping by keeping the uh, the way that they're constructed somewhat simple, um, you can you can do it over and over again. Whoops. So what I mean is, let me show you. I'm just going to concentrate on his head. Even though there's complexity to this character like this, the way we got there is not too complex. The way we got there was by drawing a ball. And a beard. Ball and beard. And make sure that the beard is heavy on the bottom and it tapers up to here. I know his eye line is halfway down the ball. And off of that eye line is going to come the nose. Like so. There's the nostrils, making sure to keep their shape always consistent. Right off the bridge of the nose is where I want the eye line. And I want the eyes about two thirds of an eye, eye width apart, like so. Uh, Autumn Beverly from uh, uh, Facebook mentioned about her teacher saying, uh, my art teacher from a private studio said I would never make any money in art because I'm too slow and that wildlife art all looks the same so I'll never stand out. <laughs> those are people that those are very narrow minded people. Very one of the great things about the mustache in this sec and, and with this is that is the ability to let it mimic a uh, an attitude. I can drop it, I can raise it up, we can do all kinds of stuff. And it still stays within the same realm of the mustache that I showed you earlier. So here we have this kind of shocked look. And once again, remember the cheeks, 
come off of here like that so here he's staying consistent now one of the things that one of the problems that I'm we're gonna I'm gonna run into is that hat and the brow area but if I move the brow and the hat if I move the hat with the brow like this I'm almost I'm okay That's the face of. Oh man, what is that smell? <laughs> 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 and then you just draw the the pelt tails. They look like thick, thick dreads. That's what I think of them as. Come off the sides. And so we got here very simply. We built it right. We we built his his look, but I can do this the same every time, like this. Just like that. Uh, Alan Rolas, do you work? out your character design on Photoshop first and then import it to TV Paint? Yes. Well, I don't import it. I draw in TV Paint. I think that's what they meant. They just yeah. phrased it. He imports using his pencil. And then here, I can just erase the top of the head. There we got. We've got to make it furry. Yeah, we've got a mountain man. Starting with that ball. So once again, start with the ball. Uh, was there ever a rivalry between Nickelodeon and Disney? It's sort of weird to think Nickelodeon is its own thing. Um, I don't remember there being a rivalry. Yeah, I mean, at the time, I mean... I mean, they were competitors, but... Yeah, but Not more, the for, artists. more in the television world, I would say Nickelodeon. I mean, they've done a few features, but they weren't really, they're not really thought of as a feature studio, I wouldn't say. No, they're more of a TV, a TV studio. The, the rivalry would be more Nickelodeon versus Cartoon Network. Here's one that I didn't do before, kind of an upshot. I don't know what that, if this is right or not. But when I do stuff like this, I always force myself to get into these difficult poses. So it forces me to think about this character as a three-dimensional object rather than hitting these like you see on, on a lot of cartoons now, where they you know they they just strike certain poses and that's it because they don't work in the other pose. Did did you learn to draw faces from reference, or do you just understand the anatomy of each feature on its own and use the Loomis method? I I don't know about the Loomis method. I draw all I you know there is a Loomis method, but I I just draw it however I can to get there. Sometimes it's with that. Sometimes it's other methods but um okay well, hold on one second sorry I'm trying to get my perspective right um but it's usually um you know I, I see it in my head first and then i i get it are you imagining what the character is thinking when you do their expressions yes a lot of times i am which one of the nine old men would you have liked to work alongside with? As much of a, an old bastard that I heard he was, um, I would really love to work with Milk Hall. I, I really admired his his uh, his draftsmanship. I loved all of them. All the guys were great. 
Uh, any advice in drawing the eyes of when the face is uh, in three quarter? I always struggle with the shape of the eye that's further from the viewer. Yeah, well, there's there's the shape, but it's also where do you put it? You got to make sure that you put it inside the skull. So often people don't do that, and that's probably that's part of the problem. You're part of the problem. <laughs> You're the problem. Hold on, I'll show you. I'll show you what I mean. Let me uh, let me tie this one down a little bit. Just to let people know that are coming late, uh, these this character uh, Aaron's working on. These images are going to be supplied uh, to people that are taking our upcoming live animation workshop, uh, which you can learn more about. It's Saturday, April 9th. If you go to creatureartteacher.com slash live, uh, spots are limited. Um, uh, but it's going to be about six hours or so of live animation where Aaron is going to animate this character. So the idea is today he's doing a bunch of model sheets, kind of working through design so that when it comes time to animate him on April 9th, he'll have... The character down pat and you'll be able to animate right alongside with them. So check it out i'm serious <laughs> and that's the way the cookie crumbles man my stylus is driving me nuts it what dropped, you doing when i draw i don't know if it's the stylus or the uh or the antique i think it's the stylus it drops out areas of the line hmm it's been doing this for a while have you changed nibs Yes. Is it in the area where you fell asleep and your face smashed against the glass? No. <laughs> I did do that, by the way, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't do it all the time. That's why I think that I just I think we're due for a new uh, stylus. Uh, do you ever get fatigue or discomfort in your shoulder when drawing in that upright position? I've been having an issue with that lately. No. I've been doing it for a long time. YouTube comment. Aaron uses the blaze method, which is whatever he's drawing, he starts with a bear and then pushes it into whatever character he is. <laughs> That's right. Very good. <laughs> oh, that was from Oh My Gandhi on YouTube. That was funny. Hey, Aaron, just wondering, have you ever animated animals lying down or standing up in your tutorial, specifically deer? Thanks. <laughs> Is someone having trouble animating a deer standing up or lying down? Uh, you did it in your... You have a... I've done. I've done. You cats. actually have a deer model sheet in your character design course. I do. I don't know if you did any of them laying down or. St it's not animated, but it's a whole model. I have. Sheet. A, I have several of them lying down, but not animated. No. Zoji says that he honestly thought that you said uh, uh, my stylist is is driving me nuts. Your stylist. Stylist. Oh, my stylist. And my hairstylist. Oh yeah, you know my stylist that I've got. <laughs> Us big time art education uh, educators, we've got stylists, <laughs> personal chefs, all that. <laughs> personal chef, personal barber, a personal butler. Oh wait, no, that's me. Uh, Maroon Rhythm on Twitch asks: When designing animal characters, one one can anthropomorphize them to give them human features and emotions. Do you ever try to animalize humans and give them animal features and characteristics? This guy with his nose and round eyes sort of looks like an owl. Oh, that's interesting. Um, no, I don't know that I ever have done it the other way around. What was I going to do after I do, did this drawing? I was going to do something for somebody. Was it showing the... Oh, shoot. Now I forgot. Hey, Detlef is here and says, hey, me ladies. Hello, Detlef. Hello, Detlef. YouTube question. Should I learn how to draw first before proceeding to animation? If you're going to draw animation. If you're going to do animation well, yes, you want to If you're going to do hand-drawn, you can do abstract, I guess, animation. Well, I mean, and also, I mean, it depends. Like, 
if you want to start dabbling with the bouncing ball yeah and stuff like that you know you don't have to be the the greatest draftsman in the world uh however strong draftsman skills will definitely if you want to do character you. animation especially character animation that's emoting and acting and then yes you should be able, you should learn how to draw where can we get those awesome brushes you're using you go to creatureartteacher.com that's the other thing too if you sign up for the streaming membership you get deep deep discounts yeah, all get, my brushes. Yep, the streaming membership, even during the free trial, gets you automatically 40% off all of our brush sets and photo packs. So the brush I'm using right now is my Pastel C brush from my original um, custom Photoshop brush set that I created about eight years ago. And um, you can also get this particular brush, although there's a lot more in the set, you can get this particular brush free if you join our newsletter over at Creature Art Teacher. That's right. I love this brush. I use it for everything. we got to put out some more brush sets. It's been a minute. I know. It's been a long time. It's been a while since we have made a brush pass. Uh, <laughs> Molly asks, can Procreate produce the same results as Photoshop? I've got Procreate, and I love it, but I'm unsure if I should invest in Photoshop down the line. Thanks. Yes, basically. I mean, it can. I, I use Photoshop because that's what I've always used. Um, I use Procreate as well on my on my iPad when I use my iPad, which isn't very often. Um, I find uh, Photoshop a little bit more robust. Um, and uh, and also the ability to, you know, because I'm, I'm always working on my my desktop computer and not my, my, uh, my iPad, um, that's why I'm not using uh, Procreate. So there you go. Although we are going to do Procreate again on a couple of future live streams. We were talking about that recently. Um, but they're actually very comparable. Procreate's come a long way. Yeah. Um, it's And I um, love the animation that she can do with it. Yep. Yep. Um, so, Molly, I wouldn't say you have to upgrade, but uh, there's also stuff that Photoshop does that's obviously, you know... Procreate sort of taken the illustration component of Photoshop and just focused on that. Photoshop can do a lot more, obviously, especially with photography and graphic design and all kinds of stuff. So just have to decide if you need that. We use it for all kinds of stuff other than just illustration. Uh, hey, Mr. Blaze, I noticed that you use pastel slash chalk pencils uh, for white when you're drawing on toned paper. But what's your opinion on using chalk, mar chalk markers? Chalk markers? Mm-hmm. Never heard of chalk markers. I've heard of them. I've never used them. Oh, that See, sounds awesome. Yeah. It, I think it comes out like a liquid and dries like a, like a chalk, I think, is how they work. There, see, so just starting with this with the ball and getting that nose in there, that's the next thing I do that basically lays down the you know the direction I need to go with everything. And if I have his mouth open really wide like this, then that's gonna and there's a mustache, and that's gonna tell me that the beard's gonna be way down here. Like so. Hey, Mr. Blaze, what uh, what graphics tablet are you using? I'm using a Wacom Cintiq Pro 32. You're so, basically drawing on a 32. It's a 32 inch screen. Do you have an image, Dustin? Probably not. Or can you move it around just real quick? There is no try. There is only do. There is such thing as try. Just watch. So I, I just make sure that I build the character the same way every time so that it feels like you can see how big I'm drawing, too. Yeah, we go, go big. Go big or go home. There you go. And I know we got a lot of people that joined late, so I want to let them know that... Uh, oh, I'll wait till you're... So, 
There's the thing there. So this is, so, you know, no matter how I build it, it starts out of that circle, and I can draw him in any direction as long as I build him the same way every time. So you can end up with all these various looking poses. But they all feel like the same character, and, all, and they're all in the same proportion because I build them the same way every time. What advice would you give someone just starting out in character design? Um, don't just draw cartoons. Draw everything. You know, that's my biggest thing is, and that one of the reasons I think I've been successful with character work is that I, I do a lot of different types of art and, um, and not, not just cartoons. We have a full character design course, too, that I'll post a link to the comments in. And uh, he takes you through his entire approach to character design, you know, and that's, there's a lot, tons of tips in there about not drawing symmetrically, straights against curves. Yeah. Uh, you know, finding places of complexity against places of simplicity. You know, there's, it's a, there's a full course on, on the topic. There's a lot to dive into more than we could probably go over in just a tip. Well, here's something I just, as I'm drawing this, I forgot to mention, no real world anatomy. Right now I'm using, I'm using a lot more real world anatomy knowledge than you might think. Even though this guy's really cartoony, the way the eyes are sitting in here, the way the brow wraps around the eyes, it's all based on my knowledge of real world stuff. I'm just pushing it and, cart and making it caricatured yeah cartoon. those eyes are set into a skull they're not exactly just drawn, they're not just drawn on top the way that you know his mouth is opening even though it's way broader than a real see ugh, i don't know if you can see nick or not but every time i it's not every time because now we'll probably won't do it but if i it'll yeah see how it, it leaves gaps hmm. see that drives me nuts See, I think something's going on with Photoshop. But we'll, we, maybe it's time to just format your computer and take it from the top. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's just time to just get a, a new Cintiq. Just throw it out the window. It's not the Cintiq, though. It's the, but anyway, um, you know, the way the mouth is opening, you know, I'm thinking about his jaw and the way the jaw connects, you know, in the, in the side of his skull, like a real jaw. Now, these are all things I think about, even if I'm doing something that's pushed and cartoony like this. And what that does is it, it leads to much more believable characters because they're rooted in reality. Now, they, you know, they don't have to be realistic, but they have to be rooted in some kind of believable physics, whether it's, I don't care if it's SpongeBob or whoever they've got to be rooted in some kind of believable physics in order for you to roll with it or at least invest emotionally in the character uh speaking of character design and character design course and i know a lot of people joined late uh yesterday we announced we are now offering a seven day free trial to our monthly streaming membership plan um you can always still buy any of our courses a la carte if you want to uh, but you, if you want to check out our courses for free, uh, head on over to creatureartteacher.com slash member, and you can learn more, and you can start a seven-day uh, trial on our streaming plan. And the character design course is actually a part of that plan. Uh, actually, almost all of our courses are. There's over 500 hours of lessons on the streaming plan. Uh, will you be doing any more art contests? I really enjoyed participating in the mixing animals. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, we are planning more of those uh, soon, actually. Sooner rather than later. Probably after Europe, not before. Yep. yep. Nick and I are heading off to Europe um, in about five weeks. Between now and then, we've got a lot to do. <laughs> there we go. So there's another one. 
We had a nail, nail, nail. Alex uh, asks on YouTube, Hey, Aaron, big fan from Toronto. How do you cope mentally moving forward with a bad or unproductive week of uh, production in the animation industry? Put it behind you. Don't dwell on it. I mean, we've had, we've all had bad weeks, right? So you just, you just got to put it behind you. And, um, you know, focus on the week you got coming up. If you get, if you get hung up on the stuff that you went through the week before, you're never going to get the stuff done with the week that's in, in front of you. So you just got to move forward. Did, uh, can I ask you a question? I never, I don't think I've ever asked you this. On Brother Bear, was there ever a, a really bad week or a, 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 a a moment when you thought the film might not go through or not get greenlit. Oh yeah, yeah, every day. <laughs> no, there's there. I had that several times. You just get, you know, it, it's usually in big story, um, big story uh, uh, discoveries. You know, they're painful at first, and you don't know if it's going to work. And sometimes they don't work. And you know, when we made the transition from Grizz being our main friend to Kenai, Grizz being Michael Clark Duncan, you know, it was that way for a year or two. And that's how the movie was gonna be. And, you know, um, then we decided to to make Coda. And Coda wasn't our idea. It was the story it wasn't my or Bob's idea. It was the story team. And um and so I really kinda I went in there kicking and screaming and um I wasn't sure if it was gonna work and it was, it was a brilliant idea. But you just never know. Is illustrating in Photoshop any good on the iPad? I'm wondering if I should uh, get a Wacom or an iPad. Well, here's the thing. If you want to, uh, if you, if you can have both, then, then definitely get the Wacom and, uh, and Photoshop. If you can't have both, then get the, iP uh, get the iPad because the iPad you can take with you everywhere. Do you ever varnish your watercolor paintings or do you just frame your watercolor paintings as they are without any protective coating? Well, I'll tell you, I, I, uh, no, I did not varnish them until we just finished up our course with, uh, Jenny Medved who waxes her paintings. Yeah. She showed Aaron some really cool techniques. Which that he's I had using. never heard of before. And I just thought it was super Super cool. Can we show our painting? Yes. So, did you say your taint top? Yeah. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> so this weekend we filmed the course with Jenny Medved, and this was the uh, who's an amazing watercolor artist. Figures of watercolor. Here, artist. let me get it. And, and actually, I do have the uh, yeah. I have the photo on the. Yep. Look at that painting, though. This painting, it, it, this is watercolor. This is so unbelievable. And to sit here, to have sat there and watched her create it over three three days, four days? Yep. I mean, it was basically two. There was yeah. a little, little bit of... Um, just I can't wait for you morning. guys to get this course. I learned a ton. And, uh, and I'm an old dog, man. So... She taught me so much in the way she built up her glazes, the way she uh, masked things off, um, the way she finished the painting. There was so much that I just thought was incredible. She, she's even got some cool tips on how to fix watercolor that I've yeah. never used, which was cool. That feels like Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top. People are saying, wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, it is. She's incredible. Look her up on social media and give her some love. Yeah, I'll post her uh, links in the comic. Or I'll post her Instagram in the comics. Comments. Sorry.
Hey, there's our uh, our lawn guy. Awesome. Lawn guy. Just love it. There's quite a few times in the week where we'd be filming and way more times than you would think. The moment we started hearing that, we just looked at each other with the frown of like, "Are you kidding me?" Yeah. <laughs> We should just step out there and just go, hey, shut <laughs> We're trying to film it. Are you going to color these uh, into or are you just... Uh... No. Uh, somebody's saying uh, the iPad version of Photoshop doesn't have the full features. That's because uh, Photoshop, Adobe, for the iPad, they have uh, sort of decided to focus the version of Photoshop for the iPad. They focused more on the photography side of it. For illustration, they have Adobe Fresco. And so that's kind of their direct competitor to procreate on the iPad, which is an interesting approach. They've split it out into its own program. It's one of the things that, and it's legitimately confusing. People get confused all the time about like, just because of the way things evolve, like Adobe Illustrator, you would think if you were just getting into computers and illustration, you would think, well, that's the program I'm going to use for illustration. Yeah. Nope. That's the program you're going to use to make logos. <laughs> For graphic design, yeah. Yeah. I don't think anybody back in the day perceived of when they were naming these things. No, they didn't. Thought they... that anybody was going to be actually painting on a computer. Right, exactly. They weren't thinking of it that way. Uh, do you get to keep the art from every course uh, not done by you? No, that was a gift, that painting. She gave that to me as a gift. Yeah. It's honored. Uh, would you ever consider doing a course on layout and backgrounds or special effects? It seems that there are far fewer resources, far fewer resources on live for that to delve into. We've got some things in the works. And absolutely we're going to be doing that. Both, actually. Uh, when's the next character workshop? Uh... If you're talking about this character here, we're doing an animation workshop with this character on Saturday, April 9th. You can sign up at creatureartteacher.com slash live. So here, you can just by, by where you put... You know, how you hold, you know, the mustache, the eyes, obviously the eyes. You know, you can get all kinds of different attitudes and and uh, and whatnot. Whatnot. Yeah, someone mentions that Adobe Flash was originally for web design, and then it got used mostly for animation, and now they've actually renamed it Adobe Animate. That's actually true. My uh, my background is in Flash animation, and it was all web stuff. And then uh, the iPhone <laughs> killed Flash. And uh, speaking of uh, comics from earlier, any uh, comic making classes coming up? We've got some people that we would like to do some courses for that. We definitely want to do something. That's not Aaron's. It's not my forte. Forte. Not the forte. Melissa from Costa Rica asks, hello, what do you do when you have creative block? I will force myself to sit there and work through it. You will break through it. You just have to force yourself to do it. What is your favorite uh, Caribbean food? My favorite Caribbean food. Um, I like jerk chicken. Jerk chicken. Uh, trying to think. I had a, a like a grouper soup in uh, in the Bahamas one time that was awesome. 
I've had some Jamaican barbecue that's incredible. It used to be a really good place in Sarasota. Have you ever met Kim Jong Ji? Yes. Uh, what about Peter Han? Yes, we know Peter Han very well. Yeah. We go to Africa with Peter. We go to Wyoming with Peter. CTN. He's actually, if you go back and look at some of our past live streams and videos, he's on some videos with us on this channel. Kim Jong Ji, we went to the Philippines together. And we've um, been to CTN at the same time. Uh, Twitch comment. How long have you been doing art? Oh, I don't know, about six or seven months now. <laughs> I just figured I'd try to get into it. and I've yeah. been drawing, I've been in art my whole life. I'm 54, and I've been drawing and, you know, as long as I can remember. Are you 54? I thought you just turned 53. No, 54. No. Oh. Born in 1968. Have you ever been to Kenya? Been to Kenya four times. I've been twice. Yeah. One of my favorite places in the world. Do you have any videos from your trip to Africa with Peter? We've got videos that he's in. We didn't do a video with him specifically. Oh, is someone not believing us? Actually, oh, if you believe us. if you uh, go to our channel, there's a video where Aaron does the watercolor of uh, that leopard that's in the background of the shot there behind him, uh, which came out really great, by the way, guys. I forgot to tell you that. And uh, Dustin and him put it together, and uh, you'll see Peter Hahn sitting around the table having breakfast. Let's see. There's a there's a figure I just did doing a uh, blue and orange. I don't know. Oh, I can take that off, don't I? Can't show that on uh, YouTube. Let me go to YouTube. There we go. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm gonna go to my channel. What are you looking for? I was going to show them the, the image you were just talking about. You should find they, it uh, Find it off screen. Oh, no. Come on. They, they, they get to see how the sausage is made here. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is the camp that we stayed at right here. And there's Peter. There's Peter in the background, right center screen. Right dead center. Yeah, this is our, every morning we would have breakfast sitting on the Mara River, that river right there. Behind us, all this stuff, that's all full of hippos. And there's uh, Manu Carrasco. And there's uh, there's uh, Peter right there. And there's Dustin over on the right. So um, it was a great crew. Very, very cool crew. It was a fun time. Had my all. How do you put a Disney style into a character? You know what? Everyone, for me, it's... It's that broad, cartoony, I don't know, it's, it, for me, it's kind of intangible. Other people see it. I have a hard time defining it, personally. Is this a character design sheet standard to the animation industry? The way you're doing it now. The way I'm doing it? Mm -hmm. Yes. You would have an expression sheet. Then you would also do some full body stuff too, right? Oh, yeah. Do you still interact with uh, Stan Proko much, much recently? Um, we recently communicated. Didn't we communicate with them? Yep. And everything started happening with uh, Ukraine. Ukraine? Yep. yep. Stan is Ukrainian. Yeah, we want to do some more stuff with him soon. Hopefully, we're going to get out to California. He came here last, so. Yeah, we owe him a trip. Now, here's a here's a um, a problem right here. I want to show you guys you that you got to solve. Here he is smiling. Now, I've I've created a character that works really well when he's. Opening his mouth and 
grimacing because there's so much going on in the face. And, you know, with that beard and mustache, it covers up a lot of stuff. So when it comes to doing a smile, it gets really complicated, especially in the cheek area. So what I try to do is leave enough room where I can get the bottom lip in. So you can get a sense of the smile there. And then, whoops, it's a bit of a cheat. But there's a corner of the mouth, the beard coming down like that. That gives you enough that your brain fills in the rest as a smile. And quite often, you don't even have to put the the, uh, the bottom lip in. See? I can get away with not putting that in at all. here I want to make sure that I'm showing the other eye you're not going to see much of it but you're going to see some of it and I want to make sure um, in the facial expressions that the gesture yeah and yes even facial expressions have gestures not just body poses, that the gesture is clear. So you'll see a lot of fluidity, like like in this, this uh, let me turn this off. With this character, because of the pose, getting those eyebrows up, I want this, this kind of feel to the gesture to mimic like the bottom of the hat, the hat itself, see it's got that feel to it. The eyes, they all push that gesture to help emphasize the expression. Did you ever get to work with Floyd Norman? Yes. So you can get that smile and then everything else is just adding detail. Here I got, whoops. There. Uh, Rex on YouTube wants to know, do you, do you have a course on drawing hands and would you ever do a live stream about drawing hands? I don't. Matter of fact, we were just talking about this the other day. I think, um, that's going to be a course I do fairly soon. I've I mean, got, I've got a, an anatomy course where I cover hands, but I don't have a course specifically on hands. And I think we could use one of those. Just curious, what what would you cover on hands that's not covered in your anatomy course? Well, the anatomy course is really just about the structure of hands and putting them in different poses. I would cover using them in expression, um, animation. I'd, I'd show them, you know, animating gotcha. uh, a couple of different things. Because I think the hands in your human anatomy course are, are great. So I was just curious. I would may, and definitely cover caricatured hands and how to simplify them, that sort of thing. I still struggle a lot with hands. And so uh, one of the things I, I love about doing these courses is I get better with whatever subject I'm teaching. I get better after I teach it. So if I teach a little course on hands, <laughs> I'll be better at hands.
Uh, speaking of the How to Draw to Human Anatomy class, that's also included with the streaming membership. So if you want to check it out, you can check it out as part of our seven-day free trial by going to creatureartteacher.com slash member. Here's another thing that um, uh, I see a lot in uh, animation. Um, character model sheets um, for people that are just starting out. They tend to, you can put, they'll put different expressions in, but they won't really change the shape of what's going on. If you're going to change an expression, if you're going to push an expression, change the shape. Don't be afraid to get in there and really stretch and squash. And I think that's, someone asked earlier, you know, what's the difference between a Disney style and other styles? And I think that's part of, part of that. You know, if you look at, if you look at the one up in the upper left, this expression here, and then the one down here on the lower left, you, know, you can see the shape change there. You know, there's a big shape change. And that's the kind of thing that we're talking about. If I, actually, if I, I wonder if I can do that. Let me take this, which one was that? Is it three? No. Six? No. Four? Uh, MK wants to know, what's the difference between the streaming membership and the regular membership? So the, uh, the monthly membership is the streaming membership. That works basically like Netflix. So you can subscribe for a month. You only get to stream everything. Uh, you don't get to download and keep everything. With the annual membership, you get everything on the website, uh, plus everything we release over the next year. You get to stream it with that, but you also get to download and keep those videos. So that would be the big difference between the two. So if you cancel the streaming membership, you lose your access. With the annual membership, you get to keep those videos as downloads. Um, we do have an app. If you have the streaming membership, uh, you can download the videos through that, uh, but that's only in the app. And again, if you cancel, then you won't have access anymore. So that's the big difference. But if you can swing it, the annual membership's the way to go because it's it ends up actually costing less over the price of a year, and and you get to keep everything. Okay, so if I take this guy and move him up here. Come on. Move him up a little bit more. You can see that shape change a little bit more. It's a little broader. He could be pushed even broader than that. But that'll it gives you a little sense of what I'm talking about. Blow it up a little bit more. Uh, Bilal or Balau, I'm not sure how you pronounce her name, says, It's my birthday today. I'd love a birthday shout out. Happy birthday, Bilal. Happy birthday. And, Happy uh, birthday to you. Also, an idea for your next animation stream it would be cool to make a shape shifting character like the genie and maybe animate him with Dush Dustin's numerous impressions. <laughs> yeah, just like that. It would only take, a, I don't know, a month. It would be cool to do something really <laughs> fluid like that, though. It would. Like a, a not, uh, I don't know what you would call a genie. It's a character that can just shapeshift. I don't know. Yeah, you can do anything. He's like fluid. So there you go. So here, you know, this is, this is something that I'll do, especially if I'm drawing digitally with a character design. It's just I'll overlay and pop back and forth just to see how the expression changes feel. And this to me feels pretty good. Matter of fact, I can't wait to animate this guy. So there you, there you go. Now he's still got a lot of line work for an animated character. Would this be... He's not as much as you think. I'd, I'd say he's about average. Okay. Yeah. If you look at all the other characters that, you know, from Disney... I'm talking, and I'm thinking about Disney characters. Um, it's not that, it's not as much as you think. 
Maybe you just put a little more shading. Especially like beef. Might, maybe you just beef. put a little more shading in. That might be what I'm seeing. Yeah. Oh, you mean to, to break up the areas? Yeah, you've got a little like shading and shadow going in where. Oh, yeah. That's, we we do that when we were drawing, just to, like if, if a character is talking, we'll shade in the mouth so you can see the dialogue a little bit better. So there we go. There's a there's a quick model sheet showing our heads. Now let's do one with the bodies. If you worked on Pinocchio, uh, what character uh, could you have animated and? What was your favorite uh, Disney movie? My favorite Disney movie is Bambi. I would have loved to have animated Pinocchio. I just love that character. I love to draw him. Oh, I haven't have you... drawn him in years. Speaking but... of which, have you seen the still from the live action Pinocchio? Yeah. With uh, Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. Yeah. Geppetto? It's exact. Yep. So I'm going to take this hill. What's the. Um... Not, is it John or it's not Little John? Because that's there's the fox in uh, Pinocchio. I always like too the actor. Yeah, it's fine, but, Lady. Yeah. yeah, but it is Little John, isn't it? Is it Little or John? Honest John? Honest John. Honest that's what John. It is. Yep. Yeah, Little John's wrong. That's why I was saying. I was. Yeah. I knew it was that. Uh, did you enjoy Tarzan? I did. I love Tarzan. My favorite literary character. I wanted to be Tarzan so bad when I was a kid. I loved Glenn's design in, of Tarzan. Oh, yeah. It's such a... That scene where he's got him surfing down the vines and all that. Super cool. What's bigger, a jaguar or a leopard? Jaguar, by far. Jaguars are also the largest cat in the Americas. You know, you did your How to Draw Big Cats course, which is also part of the streaming membership. Uh... That would be, have we, did you ever, you probably didn't do it. We never did a size comparison of the cats, like all lined up next to each other. No. You should do that once. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd just be cool, a cool reference piece to have, you know? Yeah, it would actually. And you got to end it with a house cat. <laughs> do his beard too big. How would you describe Mark Hens and Glenn Keane's work? Beautiful. Beard's getting away, trying to figure out how to. A lot of times I'll go in and just scribble, especially if I haven't drawn a character. I'll scribble to find it. This kind of related to a question we had before, but do you ever suffer from neck ache or back ache from working on a Cintiq? I don't. No, I don't. You I, generally I, maintain a pretty good posture while you work. You don't really. Yeah, I don't slouch. Oh, 
Well, if any of you are familiar with the website Creative Block, uh, who also they're also the publishers of Imagine Effects magazine, uh, a video that Aaron did for their Vertex Week conference actually went live today. It's up uh, and it's out now. I'll post a link in the comments if you want to check it out after this stream. It's where uh, Aaron walks you. It's about an hour long. He talks you walks you through designing creatures for animation or animals for animation, I think. There we go. I forgot that was out today. Yep. There we go. So you can see, notice how messy I was with drawing this. Don't be afraid to draw messy because you can always go in and like I'm doing here, make it pretty later. Or try to make it pretty because I'm trying. Will you ever do a live class in Santa Fe, New Mexico? It would be very nice. It would be nice. I'd love to go to Santa Fe. Oh, we're going to be doing one um, in September. We're going to be doing one in Wyoming, in Dubois, Wyoming. Yep. So I'm more detailed. Do you remember what the, re or what the URL is for that? No, but uh, I can find out. But uh, uh, Wyoming and New Mexico are not the same thing, just so you know. No, I know. <laughs> I just said we're going to be in Wyoming. Though, I know. I'm just for doing a, an outdoor thing. I'm just joshing you. Plus, the freaking skipping is driving me nuts. Uh, have you ever drawn Jaguars? Um, live or at home with reference. I think I may have drawn one or two. I've never, I don't think I've ever drawn a Jaguar from life. What was the name of that website uh, where you can get skulls and replicas? Bone Clones. Boneclones.com. I have no idea what context they posted this in, but this is just a, a silly joke on Twitch. You know, Bruce Lee was pretty fast, but did you know he had an even faster brother? Mm. Suddenly. <laughs> oh, God. There we go. What's this character's name? I'm thinking Bonesaw Bill. Bonesaw Bill. No, this is uh, this Where? is Muskrat Jim. Muskrat Jim. My name is Muskrat Jim. Aaron, what inspired you to draw thick Batman? My ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. No, I wanted. I'm. I'm. My age. Actually, I wanted to do. Um, like Frank Miller's Dark Knight, isn't he supposed to be like 50 years old? Or... Yeah, he's about your age, yeah, yep. Yeah, he's my age, that's what I thought. And uh, I'm definitely not the same svelte uh, size that I was back in my uh, late 20s and early 30s. And so I just thought it would be fun to, to draw Batman the way he would look as a middle-aged man. And man, boy, did I get a lot of 
blowback from it. And funny blowback. I, I think it's awesome. Yeah, people thought it was hilarious. Like it's funny too because everybody zoomed in on the butt. Like, and it's to me the thing that caught my eye was the cape, and I know that's what you spent all the time on. Yeah, the butt. I didn't think was you know I I modeled it after a pretty well built big dude that's thick, not T H I C C, but just a thick dude. And uh, but, but yeah, boy, it's funny. But I tend to draw my characters. A little thicker anyway i like putting whether it's female or male i like the anatomy i want to let people know uh just remind them we have a limited edition puzzle it's actually available for sale right now if you go to featureartteacher.com slash puzzle uh, it's a 345-piece puzzle that's available for a limited time at FeatureArtFeature.com. Uh, there's only a couple hundred of these being done, and when they're gone, they're gone. And we've already uh, shipped out a bunch of them this week, so get your order in soon. When you're hot, you're hot. And if people like them, we're going to do a whole series of these. So uh, this particular image might not come around again for a while. So if you like it, get it while it's hot. Uh, what time is it there now? It is 2.30 p.m. in the afternoon. We are in daylight savings time now in the sunny florida in the u.s of a youtube question for dustin Hey, Dustin, when can we see you drawing? <laughs> uh, good question. I haven't drawn in forever. Your uh, YouTube comment, Aaron, your Batman actually reminded me a lot of how Frazetta draws people. Yes. Well, I was, I'm definitely influenced a lot by Frazetta and the way he draws people. By women, a matter of fact, I mentioned that in my the latest course, uh, the last female that I was drawing, I tend to draw females uh, rather thick. Have you seen the new Batman and did you like it? I have not seen it. I haven't seen it yet either. Uh, are there live courses planned during your trip to uh, Europe and Austria? Uh, where will yes. we be able to find those dates? Yes, we're going to be posting a schedule soon. Uh, a couple of the events are actually in association with a group that we're going out there with uh, called Playgrounds, based out of the uh, Netherlands. I believe their website is weareplaygrounds.nl. Uh, we're going to be at two events with them, uh, one in Eindhoven, Netherlands, and one in Berlin, Germany. So if you actually go to their website, again, it's weareplaygrounds.nl. I think they might already have tickets up for sale for those events. And then we're going to be doing a series of uh, workshops uh, with a couple of the local schools. And then we're planning on hosting our own event that's going to be open to our subscribers and followers and we want to try to do at least some sort of meetup while we're there so we'll post a complete schedule as we get closer uh what time is it there now it is 2 33 p.m eastern standard Time. you were asleep at the wheel dustin i answered that question about three minutes ago stay out of my territory <laughs> quit watching videos <laughs> did you ask the uh, uh most influential uh disney animator i did not i only asked the time question because i just happened to see it 
postal something. Uh, who would you say is the most influential Disney animator uh, you worked with and had not worked with? Bud Keen. For sure. Glenn Keane taught me animation. Redraw that eyeball. I don't like it. Have you ever had a character do a pose that you had to improvise some things that weren't referenceable from their character sheet? Uh, I'm not sure I understand that question. Well, like, you have to make something do something that you can't get reference for. Like, I mean, obviously, there's, I can give you an example of where I know you had to do it. There's things I'm sure that the lions and the lion can do that real lions can't oh, do. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's all, that's all over the place. You do that on everything. Yeah, everything we do in animation is, you know, you're not just caricaturing the look of something, you're caricaturing the movement, the action. Oh, Steven Silver is on watching us on YouTube, and he says, hey, Aaron, hope all is awesome. Steven Silver is in the house. Hey, man, everything's great. Thank you. For those of you that don't know, um, most of you do, um, Steven Silver is an amazing artist, character designer. We worked a little bit together at Disney years ago. But uh, check him out and follow him if you get a chance, if you don't already. He's huge in the industry. That's why I'm saying you probably already know him. So, this guy, so I'm just, when I'm, when I'm coming up with a model sheet for a character, such as Muskrat Jim, um, it starts out, before I've done animation, you know, it goes in, uh, in steps. Um, if I haven't done any animation yet and I'm just working out the character design and it's for a movie and you're trying to get it approved, um, it's a lot of this kind of thing where you just come up with situations in your head and you put the character in the situation and, uh, and draw that. And from there, you, you know, you're able to get together with the directors or the art director or both and we talk it out. And, uh, and out of that, you get your, your you know, initial approval. And then, um, as a supervising animator, this is how we did it, um, I would start to animate. And I would use, obviously, the initial model sheets for, um, for my reference. But then after that, you know, the, your character... Um, as you animate them, they evolve. They, they, they get better. And so, as you animate shots, you're going to end up with shots with certain drawings or you go, oh, man, that's the character right there. That's, the, that's what I've been looking for. And so you, you Xerox those drawings. You take them out, or Xerox, I guess that's old school. But you, you know, we would... Um, We'd copy those drawings, and we'd make new model sheets from the shot that we just animated, and we'd add that to the to the to the growing sea of model sheets de depicting the character. And then, usually, by the end of the movie, here's his moccasins. Usually, by the end of the movie, you'd be able to draw your character well enough that you're ready to make the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but then it's too late and it's time to move on to the next movie. But um but yeah, that's that's pretty much the process as we do stuff like this. And uh you know, put him in like I said, different poses and whatnot. And then uh then see where it goes from there through animation. And a lot of times what I'll do is, especially if he has accessories like this, I'll go in and uh, just give it a little value structure just so things will pop out. Like his hat being one thing. You know, separate that out. His... Uh, 
his beard being something else that can separate out. Along with his eye. You know, there's there's enough there that you know we can go and oh his pants as well. Once again, just doing this in black and white, just so you can see all the different elements that make up the character. Whoops. Do the same thing. Whoops. Doggone it. I'm going nuts here. Muskrat Jim. What was your inspiration for this character? Um, I can't remember. I drew him for the uh, for my um, character design course. Character design course. Thank you. I'm just so slow when I'm trying to draw and make connections to opposite parts of my brain. I have a hard time. Um, I can't remember what I was thinking about. I definitely was thinking about a story. I think I, you know, I was, as a kid, I was a big fan of Grizzly Adams. And I think I was thinking about him. Because Grizzly Adams had a bear. His name was Grizzly Adams, for Christ's sake. Uh, in animation, how exact is consistency throughout? Uh, for instance, are body parts precisely measured and sized by the cleanup crew? You know, it's... For, I, I always... Some people treated it a lot more academically than I did and they would measure and that sort of thing. I just, my whole rule has always been if it looks right, it is right. So I never did that kind of thing. I was like, okay, the head is about this. And, you know, their characters move around so much and they're drawn in so many different angles that you can get away with a lot, a lot and not have to worry about it. Did, that was always, that's just always been my philosophy. And didn't you mention, like, I remember an example, you said that the Beast was a character where six different people drew him in it. it oh, looked... six different people drew the Beast, and there's six different Beasts in the movie. Yeah. And, but, I mean, Beauty but the you Beast, don't notice Beauty it the Beast is it. that way consistently throughout. I mean, Beauty the Beast is a wonderful movie, but it's one of the worst in, in, in terms of consistency from character to character that we did in the 90s out of any of the films. Every character, I mean, there's... There's about six different bells as well. I know I sent you the article on a Hollywood Reporter, but they did a big write-up on Beauty and the Beast because I believe it's this week is the 30th anniversary of the Oscars, where it was. Oh my God! Nominated for. Uh... We were at the we were at the studio in the in the uh, in the um, one of the big theaters there when uh, when it was up. The only animated uh, feature to ever be nominated for Best Picture. Yep. Now, partly that's because didn't they create the Best Animated Feature category after that? Yes. And so it, it it's a double-edged sword because it's cool to have its whole own separate category, but it kind of made... Yeah, but then we could never be nominated again. And they did that because of that. Yeah. Because you can only be in one category, right? Like you, yeah. couldn't, you couldn't submit a film to both, right? Right. Because I, I know. I don't know if you can or can. I don't. I I bet you their rules make it so that you can't. Because I would argue that Wally would have stood a shot as a best animated fe or best feature if it had gotten nominated. Oh, I'm sure. But it wasn't in that. It obviously won in in the animated category. But I think it would have. I think there's several that could have been nominated. I think Lion King could have been nominated. Yep.
Yeah, there was some controversy all around that time, right? Was it was it Susan Sar Sally Field? Or Sally something? Fields. And she got up and she goes, it's a sad day when an animated movie or something to that effect, you know, beats out. It was just, it was really derogatory towards... She was we, basically saying it's not, animation's not a real movie, right? It's, basically, It was yeah. the gist of what she was getting at. It was pretty crappy, yeah. Oh, Alwish Art says, I have a solution to the brush cutting out. Try to stop smooth. Set your smoothing in Photoshop to 0%. My smoothing is at zero. I yeah. never have smoothing. Yeah, I didn't think you did. I was just yeah. reading the comment. Unless it got turned on somehow. No, it's not on. It's off. What are your favorite keepsakes from when you worked at Disney? Uh, my my maquettes, probably. My maquettes. I've got my Oscar nomination up on the shelf. That that uh, uh, my um yeah, my, my, probably the maquettes and the drawings. You know, a lot of our, a lot of the, the drawings we did of each other, those are a lot of fun. Question from Steven Silver. Yeah. What's the story in your head right now as you're drawing this guy? In this one, it's, it's, uh, he hasn't seen Milo, his bear. He hasn't seen Milo in like ages. And, uh, and so he's seeing Milo now. And, uh, so he's looking up at him going, hey, Milo. You should bring down the, for people that wouldn't have seen it earlier, do you got the bear drawing? You can bring it down. Oh, this one? Yeah. This is Milo here. So they're buddies. And the reason Aaron is drawing this character today is these are model sheets that are going to be supplied to our participants in our upcoming live workshop on April 9th. If you go to creatureartteacher.com slash live, you can sign up and we're going to send you about a week before the event. Uh, so basically around the 1st of April-ish, we'll be sending you uh, these files so you can get familiar with this character and practice drawing them because during the workshop, uh, Aaron will be animating the character live and you'll have an opportunity to animate along with him. So again, if you go to creatureartteacher.com slash live, uh, you can learn more about it, sign up, and uh, we'll send you these files so you can animate uh, Muskrat Jim along with Aaron. Muskrat Sally. Muskrat Jim. <laughs> Uh, Eric Bay is asking, is there info on the Wyoming event? Uh, is it open to the public? I am looking for yes. those. I'm looking for that link now. I've We're actually going to be doing a live stream in a couple of weeks regarding that. It's not my, it's not our event. It's a, it's a. Uh, You're teaching for someone but else. But we are teaching as part of the event. And they're looking to get, most of the time that they've done this event, it's been a lot of traditional painters and artists and they want to kind of break into a new audience and so they're asking me to help promote Drawing this nose at an up angle is a pain. I'm not sure if I'm doing it right. Oh, I found it. It's skbworkshop.com. Yes, that's it. 
and the dates of the events are uh, Sunday, September 18th through Friday, September 23rd. It's a full week. Um, there's going to be in-person and Zoom uh, availability for it. Uh, do members get a discount on the live event for April 9th? Yes, you do. You get an automatic 10% discount. And the life hack, if you become a free member, you also get that discount. <laughs> become a free member for seven days. You get their discount. What have you got to lose? Oh my God. Struggling? Oh, the freaking stylus and the broken line. Driving me nuts. Driving me nuts, hey? Driving you nuts, too, eh? Uh, Twitch question from Eric Have you ever seen the movie Jeremiah Johnson? Oh, yeah. Very simple, awesome film. One of my favorites. Uh, do you recall working uh, with Phil Young? Yes. Phil animated the wolves in Beauty and the Beast. What was the purpose of the Disney Renaissance in the late 80s and 90s? The purpose? Purpose. Uh, it brought animation back? <laughs> to make money? <laughs> Without the Disney Renaissance, uh, the, the animation was going to be shut down. They had plans on shutting it down. Whoops. Edwin on YouTube wants to know, what's your opinion on Disney's movie Dinosaur? Uh, this Dinosaur is a beautiful film that not a lot happens. I'm not going to be able to animate this, but I'm going to put it in anyway. All of his... Ryan says, that bear design reminds me a little of Open Season. Which was the Sony movie, I believe, right? Open Season? Yeah. Uh, David Coleman did a bunch of work on that. So did Andy Harkness. Yes. Was Andy art director on that? or was he... um, I think he was. Do you miss movies having special features and bonus material watch, but streamingly you hardly ever get to see that kind of stuff? No, I never, I never really used it. You never really watch it. I watch it all the time. Uh, Ryan, you know who does a great job with that is Disney Plus. Uh, Ryan asked that question, which is why I said Ryan. Um, Disney Plus, if you go into the extras, they've got all that stuff still. Like all that stuff that was on the DVDs is all still there with most of the movies. Pretty cool. That's one of the reasons why when Brother Bear came out, we, um, because Bob and I just, it just felt pretentious for him and I to do extra stuff. And so we, um, that's why we came up with the moose to do the director's commentary, which came out with pretty good, I think. No, it's great. I still, to this day, want you and, uh, Chuck to sit down. It's, as you know, he was a producer, Chuck Williams, and you. I do think you should do a. I'll do it on YouTube sometime. Yeah, yeah. I think it'd be great. Have you seen the trailer for the Obi Wan series? What do you think of it? Oh, it's yeah. uh, simple. <laughs> it's a simple trailer. Looks good to me, though. Yeah, looks great. I saw the, uh, or part of it. Oh, actually, I saw the whole thing. The, uh, the Halo. The new Halo show. Oh, I haven't it? seen it yet. The trailer? Yeah. No, the, the show itself. Wait, it's out? Yeah. I didn't think it was out yet. Yep, the, the 
the first episode's out. Watched it last night. Oh, it literally came out last night. Yeah. So there you go. Okay. I yeah. didn't realize that. I'm going to call it after this one. So next week, I'm going to be focusing on getting the thumbnails. First of all, getting the dialogue. And then getting the thumbnails done for the animation that I'm going to be doing on the 9th of April. Um, and we'll get that sent out. So that's going to be the big focus beyond my, um, my painting dynamic light and figures the pose you're uh with his arms outstretched oh my gandhi says uh that pose is exactly how i feel when i've eaten a gas station egg salad sandwich and there's no bathroom in sight <laughs> well there you go see these little tassels on him on his uh on his outfit it's a perfect element for an illustration, but horrible for um, 2D animation. Probably could get away with it. I don't know how hard it would be for 3D because you're still going to figure out the, the animation for it. But So, yeah, in addition to these, in case people didn't understand that, in addition to these model sheets, uh, Aaron's going to be putting together, he's going to thumbnail out a scene so that when we do the live workshop on April 9th, uh, you'll be able to follow along and animate with him. The whole idea is this is the same process he would use animating right. a scene on any feature film, so you're going to get to see yep. that whole process in real time. Exactly. So... Spots are limited. Go to creatureartteacher.com slash live and sign up today. It's going to be fun. I want to show you that you can animate a whole shot. I'm not going to have all the in-betweens, but you can animate a whole shot in a day with dialogue. Do you prefer Lion King or Jungle Book, the 1967 animated? Uh, well, I worked King. on Lion King, so it's hard to it's hard to make that kind of bias to it. Yeah, I prefer Lion King. Lion King's a better story. I prefer the live action Jungle Book to the cartoon Jungle Book. Yeah, I actually think they they fleshed it out and made it a more complete movie. I I mean I like the classic Jungle Book. Don't get me wrong, but I uh, didn't get a chance to get into him a whole lot of his whole body, getting a lot of body attitudes. But it always takes me a while to ease into it because my first drawings always look like crap. And then as I get get more of a sense of the way he's built, because I've got his personality in my head, it's just a matter of finding the, uh, getting it all to work together. <laughs> this question made me laugh. Do you prefer your children or do you like other people's children more? Oh, I like other people's children way better than my own children. Oh, yeah. I, just, <laughs> I totally agree. <laughs> have you ever tried 3D animation, computer animation? I have not. Would you ever want to? No. <laughs> no, it, it's, if it, it, I would love to do it if it's not procedurally so complex. Yeah, you want to get If it gets to a animate. point where I can just move it virtually like i'm moving a, a puppet in in stop motion if it was that easy then i would definitely do it which is a big part of what they're working on i mean when we when we were talking with our good friend walter uh who was a rigger at disney and other studios that's kind of they're trying to get to that point with vr where you know the idea being you're just moving a rig yeah and that's that's really what i you know i would definitely do it then because then it's it's an easy leap yeah the biggest issue with 3D software is your, it's counterintuitive to animating because there's so much stuff you have to do that's software specific, you know. Exactly. 
What do you find the hardest part to draw of the characters? Um, drawing expressions in full body or like this, like right here, um, that's the easiest for me. Putting it all together in full body expressions, that's where it gets difficult for me. And I still struggle with hands. How do you simplify? Uh, sorry, may I ask, how do you simplify a complex character to make it easy to animate? Uh, it breaks down, you know, you, you bring it down to simple shapes, simple silhouette, um, being able to build it simply. Um, that's the key, I think. And, um, you know, when you, when you can build it simply, when it's made of, of simple shapes that are easily, that's easy to remember the, the relationship between those shapes, um, then it's, it's a breeze to, to, uh, to draw them after that. It really is. So there you go. Those are there's Muskrat Jim with some of the other old um, model sheets and the new stuff we did today. So that's what we're going to be drawing on. Uh, you can see I made his hat a little too small in the new ones. Looking at his old hat, I like that bigger hat, bigger poofier hat. But um, anyway, um, we'll be. Uh, this is the guy we're going to be animating. On April 9th so um, do some frame grabs if you want to join us and then we're also gonna make well actually we'll make these we should just make these available to anybody yeah or, you know we yeah. can do that yeah. and if you want to join us then join us but um, we'll, right. we'll set it up on the website where you can download them go to creatureartteacher.com slash live yes exactly there you go and uh, show that. Uh, were you on this? Show the screen. I'll oh, show the screen. There you go. There. Did you show that earlier? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You got it. Okay, good. Yeah. So you'll have access to all this stuff, and um, and then we're going to be animating him. Whether or not we do the bear, we do Milo. I'm not sure yet. But um, and then also make sure you go on over and check out our new streaming option, because that's going to give you access to everything on the site. Well, it's going to give you access to hundreds and hundreds of hours. Yeah, over 500 hours yeah. of lessons instantly by trying up for our new seven-day free trial over at CreatureArtTeacher.com. In fact, we got a little spot for it. Dustin, play roll it. it. So I hope you guys have a great week. I hope you enjoyed today. And uh, once again, keep an eye out for uh, the new our animation uh, live stream that we're going to be doing. Well, not live stream, but live event that we're going to be doing April 9th. Go on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com slash live for that. Check out our new uh, streaming option, which is uh, really cool and available now, where you can get free streaming for seven days. Uh, and you'll have access to hundreds of hours of content and deep discounts on our brushes and uh, uh, other items. And then also in the next week or two, uh, be on the lookout for our new course, Dynamic Lighting and the Figure, which I'm just figure, uh, fi finishing. I'm just finishing up now and we'll have done in the next day or two. So uh, I hope you guys have a great week. Have a beautiful, safe weekend. Going out there, put some beauty back into the world. Because we're artists. That's our job. And I'll talk to you next time. Thanks. Bye. Later. Bye, everybody.